Hello everybody, thank you so much for coming tonight. I want you to give a very, very warm welcome to Dr. Kieran O'Keefe and Billy Roberts. Good evening everybody. My name is Dr. Kieran O'Keefe and I'm a parapsychologist. This evening, what you're going to hear from me is the science of the paranormal. In addition, I may throw in some psychological mind tricks, but I'll be attempting to explain, or at least find natural explanations for what mediums and psychics do. And my name isn't Karen O'Keefe, it's Billy Roberts, and I'm a medium. And hopefully we're trying to prove that mediumship does exist, and a medium's job is mainly to prove the continuity of the soul by giving messages to selected members of the audience so hopefully you'll judge for yourself which is right and which is wrong. Welcome, this is The Great Paranormal Clash. <laughs> I'm often asked what exactly is parapsychology and without knowing the knowledge of the audience in front of me, I'd like to start off by giving you a very brief definition about parapsychology. It is essentially the science of the paranormal, but it covers a number of different areas. Extrasensory perception, or ESP, and psychokinesis, or PK. Now, extrasensory perception can be one of three things, telepathy, precognition, or clairvoyance. Telepathy is mind-to-mind -mind communication. Precognition is predicting the future. And clairvoyance is not what you traditionally think of in terms of mediumship. Clairvoyance is actually the mind interacting with an object. So for example, if you have an envelope and you have something inside the envelope, I would be using clairvoyance to try and work out what is inside the envelope. In addition, parapsychology is concerned with PK. This idea of moving objects with your mind. Everybody's seen uh, a well-known play like Bend a Spoon, for example. That's PK. And that's an example of what we call macro PK, something we can see, as opposed to micro PK, which we can't see. In addition, some parapsychologists say that poltergeist activity is actually PK activity. It's caused by somebody's mind. But the area of parapsychology we're concerned with tonight is actually after-death communication. And within after-death communication, we could talk about haunting experiences, interacting with ghosts, for example, sense of presence. But in addition, after-death communication is something like mediumship. It can be sitting around a seance table, it can actually be using a medium to communicate with spirits, but essentially it's after-death communication. Now, whenever I do lectures in university, um, I've never done a, a stage show like this before, so we'll see what happens, but whenever I do lectures, I'm always on the lookout for potential psychic superstars or mediumship superstars, ones that I can actually bring into the lab and test myself. So for that reason, I'm going to be doing a few tests this evening. And I'll start off with quite a simple one, just to get a general feel of the audience and what you're like. What I'd like you to do is think of one of the following six cards. Clear your mind. So really calm. Think of one of the following six cards. Okay, does everybody have one? Okay, what well, this is an example of is precognition. When preparing these cards, I thought what I'd like to do is actually remove one of the six cards and hope that somebody in the audience, that I've actually chosen one of their cards. So in this example of precognition, I am predicting the future. So I'm going to show you now five cards. So I've removed one. I'd like a show of hands if I've actually removed your card. Okay. Um, that's 
pretty much everybody, I think. Um, for the people that didn't put up their hands, come and see me in the interval. There's a problem with you. Um, my lab won't be able to cope with this number of people. But one thing that we do as parapsychologists is something called telepathy experiments. Now, was what you just saw an example of telepathy? I think by the laughter people are going, well, maybe it wasn't You're playing a trick on us. But something we do genuinely do is telepathy experiments. And the way we arrange this is we have two people, what's called a sender and a receiver. A sender is somebody who's trying to telepathically or psychically send an image or something to the receiver. The receiver is reporting the imagery or maybe drawing the imagery, but he's trying to receive the image. What I'd like to do now, it's going to be very tough because this is quite spontaneous. What I'd like is two volunteers to be a sender and a receiver. And we'll try it on stage. It's not a perfect scenario, it's not a laboratory, but I'd like two volunteers to come down to the front of the stage to be a sender and a receiver. Any volunteers? Yes? The two of you? Did you come together? You know each other quite well? or? Your sisters, well then that's perfect. Okay, if you'd like to come down. So if you'd like to sit down here. Okay, what's your name? Lorraine. Lorraine, okay, if you'd like to sit at the other. What's your name? Sorry, it's Leanne. Leanne and Lorraine, fabulous. Okay, if you sit down there. What I'd like you to do, if you hold the pad so that nobody else can see it, nobody else in the audience can see it, I don't want to be accused of uh, somebody in the audience actually looking at what you're focusing on and, and maybe giving the game away, but essentially we've got a sender and a receiver, and we're going to try and get the sender to send uh, an image or something to the receiver. So, I've got a pen here, what I'd like you to do Clear your mind if that's possible. And although you are sisters, I should say we haven't set this up beforehand, have we? Okay. No, in fact, I don't even know who you are, both of you. But it's useful we've got sisters because there's some sort of connection going on there. So what I'd like to do is turn over the front of the uh, of the pad. There's instructions there um, about what you're going to focus on. And also, I think what I'd like to do. Uh, with this particular experiment is the sender to actually draw something, draw something that uh, they can then send to the receiver and the receiver maybe can actually draw the images. So if we just have about 30 seconds, uh, maybe a minute or maybe even a bit longer, we'll see how they do. If we can just have silence while we have the sender and the receiver focus and try and connect. You've got a problem with your pen. That's not a good start. There you go. That's not a good start, is it? I'll do yours for you. Yes, of course. There you go. Yeah.